Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic, host of Bachelor Nation News. We have an update in the Clayton Eckerd v. Jane Doe paternity scandal that's rocking the world or our very niche group of people who want justice where it belongs. And um, yes, I too am wondering why bigger news outlets haven't reported on this, but uh, she continues, Jane Doe's accuser, to file complaints. And now we're seeing complaints filed against Clayton's attorney. And what's that? Her attorney as well? No, not her current one. The attorney from two attorneys ago. Yeah, uh, she's got. Uh, you know, uh, like we like we commented on yesterday on this morning's podcast. She's swallowing her attorney's whole um, and just chewing them up, spitting them out. And um, I guess do you swallow something and spit it out? Either way, she's spitting out them right now, and uh, it's absolutely wild. Some of the complaints. We're going to jump into it. Follow me on Instagram at dneils, and also don't forget Bachelor Rush Hour. If you want to support our channel, check out the podcast. You can download anywhere you listen iphones droids google wherever just please we appreciate all the support over there we'll have all of the updates and i think today is going to be a big one uh, we're going to go live at 11 a.m central standard time i'm going to be giving you guys extra private live stream today going to double it at least two hours as we go through all of these filings and everything else going on in the case just when you think oh it's going to get quiet before june 10th nope a monster energy drink full of content has arrived, 94 pages, and I'm going to start on page three. Uh, complainant initial charge, immediate assistance and guidance needed in response to ethical concerns and intimidation in legal case. So these filings are from back in February, but it does show where she filed a complaint against her own attorney at the time. She claims Alexi Lindvall was coercing her to commit perjury by getting her to sign a paper that said she um, lied. She lied and was never pregnant in the first place. She refused to sign that, hey, give it up for her conviction. Although what it does is show us that she's telling on herself because it means Alexi Lindvall didn't believe her and followed the evidence. Alexi Lindvall, a recent mother. In fact, we're going to share with you if we get to it today, maybe on the Patreon, attorney suing former firm for termination while seeking postpartum depression treatment. This is Lexi Lindvall, and this came out yesterday. Lexi Lindvall's uh, in a lawsuit with her for former um, attorneys over, um, over some pretty bonkers stuff related to her own pregnancy. I like Lexi Lindvall. From all I've seen, she is a badass mother who's fighting for her rights as she sees them with maternity leave and being respected in the workplace, she accuses her uh, bosses of kind of um, shaming her for pumping breast milk in the office. I mean, wild stuff, folks. We need to treat uh, these moms a lot better than this. Real moms, not moms that um, claim to have babies coming on, uh, on, on February 14th and then change the story 15 to 20 times. As I said earlier, um, uh, Jane Doe wants me to prove that she was never pregnant. I want her to prove that she ever was. And she'll show in this you know, complaint. She's got comprehensive indications she was pregnant. No. We have yet to see those, and we'll let the judge decide. I'm just a reporter sharing the news, In my opinion after sharing it is there is nothing in this 94 pages that leads to uh, there being any ethical violations by Woodnick Law. In fact, in some aspects, we'll see her possibly telling on herself, as she claims Woodnick Law uh, as, a, as a hungry person out for publicity. And it's like, well, who did you hire then? So I'm going to start on page 14. We're just going to go straight because a lot of this is just, you know, she talks about her lawyer's withdrawal, which we'll get more into her request for confidentiality with regards to some of her medical information. I mean, she shared some exhibits. All of these are redacted because they are confidential information with her and her uh, attorney. So let's just jump to page 14 here. And here's an email she sent to Sandra Montoya. Uh, who uh, I guess is maybe the assistant or someone who works with the intake bar council. Good afternoon, Miss Sandra. I was in the, oh, excuse me. No, no, I'm sorry. This is from Reed Potter to Jane Doe. Excuse me. Good afternoon, Miss Jane Doe. I was in the process of leaving you a voicemail, but believe it was cut off. I reviewed your detailed submission. He was like, I, got, I sent you such a long voicemail. It didn't go through. I reviewed, and, and by the way, 
we're having voicemail issues with Jane Doe. The police couldn't get through to her. Maybe it's not even a real voicemail number. Who knows? I reviewed your detailed submissions. As previously stated, you are currently involved in ongoing litigation. The basis for your allegations are mostly from the pleadings themselves, which is why I am suggesting speaking to your current counsel, Mr. Keith. Again, this is her last counsel. The issues at this stage are more appropriately raised with the court. The court is the most familiar with the facts, rules, statutes, and case law for your case. It is inappropriate for the state bar to get involved in active cases except under certain circumstances not applicable here so what they say is you got to let this work itself out in court this is like if you're on a baseball team and you're in a baseball game and you're the pitcher and the batter's up to bat and you want to argue to the umpire hey we shouldn't have lost this game and the umpire's like well you got to play the game first you haven't even pitched the ball so you got to play the game before we can argue whether or not it was ethical uh so that's what they say uh, if the court concludes that Mr. Wittnick acted inappropriately, please provide us with a copy of that written finding for further consideration. Until then, we consider this matter dismissed and we'll take no further action. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, will the court find that Wittnick acted inappropriately? I don't think there's any um, arguments in the court right now that he has, so I don't see that happening. Now, here's an email from Greg. They email Greg and says, the state bar recently received a bar charge against you. I have determined that further investigation is not warranted at this time and our file has been closed. The charge is dismissed. Um, the record of the charge will be public for six months from the date of this email. So they didn't tell Greg who filed a bar charge against him. Greg's response goes, thanks, Reed. Safe guess it was from Jane Doe. I appreciate you closing this, Greg. Oh, boy. So we're going to see some wild things in this in this filing here, uh, but let's keep on going from Jane Doe. I wanted to add to my complaint and articulate my deep-seated concerns regarding the conduct. So this is at February 26. Um, this is February 26 at 3.07 p.m. So initially they emailed her February. So this was the the email before Reed Potter just responded. Misrepresentation and offensive allegations by Greg Woodnick. In an email sent to my sister, Mr. Woodnick made several baseless and deeply offensive allegations. He stated multiple men have alleged that your sister fabricated pregnancies. Well, multiple men have alleged that, I mean, Greg Gillespie, Clayton Eckerd, yeah, Mike Maricini, the other victim... That's all in the deposition. So since she, she, her deposition was after this email, but I mean, multiple is an understatement. Several, four, at least have alleged that she fabricated pregnancies. These allegations not only completely misrepresent my personal and medical history, but also appear to contravene the ethical standards. An inappropriate direct communication by Greg. Mr. Winnick's email to my sister sent to both her personal and business emails bypasses standard legal protocols and directly involved a family member in a distressing manner, stating Jane's actions are about to land her with very unpleasant legal consequences, including possible criminal perjury charges. Now, we wish that if she did lie under oath that they would charge her for perjury, but unless and maybe 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 there needs to be a campaign to the district attorney's office that they cover this even though it's small ball according to the things that they like to uh, come after bigger corruption and this and that it still makes a mockery of the court system if she did commit perjury Unsustan um, unsubstantiated public statements by Woodnick Law and Media so then she comes after Miss Isabel Rainey Rainey or Rainey I think it's Rainey uh, don't Rainey on my parade <laughs> Jeez, it's Thursday, folks. So, don't, you know, go after Wood Nick. Don't go after Miss Isabel. She's been nothing but a peat chair, folks. She's doing the, she's, she's in a master's class, by the way. She, this might be, I mean, she's just, uh, what a beast. She's a beast. That being Isabel, not Jane. Jane's a beast in her own way, I'm assuming. A beast, uh, a beast with her HCG output. Um, so then he goes on and on and on. Uh, for verification of my pregnancy, you may access my patient portal at Banner Health, where my pregnancy was initially confirmed. So she gives her login information to this guy who works for the Arizona Bar. And the guy's like, hey, Toots, could, I don't, I'm not going to go into your Banner Healthcare thing to confirm this. See it with the judge. And of course, that confirmation was just an HCG test, which as far as we know, confirms elevated HCG levels, but no actual pregnancy, no ultrasound, none of that. And it goes on and on. So um, as far as what uh, we have next, we did page 15 and 17, and now let's, we did 20. So we're going to jump all the way to page 81. And then on page 82, she'll give her examples. So then she gives, you know, the different, you know, um, 
you know, exhibits and all of that. And there's, there's plenty in here, folks, uh, some of which we'll cover on the Patreon. Page 81. This is from Greg to Corey. This is where I'm mentioned. Oh, good. Press. I love to get press as a comedian. Don't really care if it's in the Maricopa County court system. Not exactly the types of write-ups I'm looking for, but this is where we find ourselves in the good Lord's year of 2024. Corey, things just keep getting more ridiculous. Agreed. Even after my email yesterday, there is another article. Again, this is February 9th. There is another article by your client. She appears to be focusing her efforts on the video journalist Dave Neal. I trust Dave is a big boy and he can deal with this nonsense, but her allegations against him after dismissing her ridiculous attempt at an injunction are concerning to say the least. She is now alleging that Dave somehow incited violence against her and that she is now facing death threats. Note the few videos I've seen by Dave repeatedly condemn violence against Jane. Now, not only this, but thanks to the work of the flock and so many other good Samaritans out there, we've got a comprehensive list and I mean comprehensive, something in the 80s or 90s, of times I said, don't reach out to her, don't do anything fit, don't make any threats whatsoever to her, let's win this in the court system. And again, there are kooky people that might not take my advice, and then there are kooky people that might fake death threats. Since Jane's bag of tricks tends to fit a pattern, we suspect that the postings were a contrived ploy to yet again request a motion to seal. I appreciate that your client wants to view herself as a victim by the press that she incited and continues to stoke with her articles, but these postings should be viewed with several grains of salt. We personally tried to find the alleged postings, but to no avail. So um, that's pretty wild stuff there. That's right. They call me... Dave, the big boy. That's right. It's Dave, some podcaster, the big boy coming to you live here, a video journalist. That's who it is. I am taking submissions. If anyone wants to make a Dave's big boy shirt. Now we know big boy. If we search big boy uh, here, we know the uh, big boy restaurants are a chain, but if we could get somebody to possibly make a cartoon image of the face here that, that fits in with the big boy brand, I think Dave's a big boy should be fantastic merch shorts, shirts or shorts for the June 10th hearing. Maybe I'll I'll be reporting as video journalist Dave the Big Boy. Uh, that's what they call me, folks. Uh, it takes a big boy to follow this case amongst uh, threatened, you know, multiple threatens of cease and desist, cease and desist, threatens of defamation into the dozens of times by litigish, lit, litigious Lexi uh, over here. And I tell you what, the skin is thick, the boys are big, and the journalism is in the video. So here we are. We're heating up. Let's keep it going. So right here, we have Greg Woodnick implying that Jane Doe may be behind her own death threat. And I'm sorry, falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. My new favorite saying as a big boy, it's a big boy saying, but how are we supposed to believe she received a credible, uh, credible death threat? How are we supposed to believe that when everything else uh, resembles Jesse Smollett level um, a lab grown victimhood? That's what it resembles. And I guess, you know, all of us in our long lives, we hope to live may all face one strange allegation, accusation, but a second time and a third and a fourth. And then it's like, okay, either she's got some sort of power ovary that can just suck the old Clayton right out of the throat. Or he's lying and he's got no proof of lying or she's lying. And we've seen through her deposition and through other statements that she's contradicted herself to high hell. If we just decided to go with who has a track record of telling the truth and who doesn't, I think it's very clear what side we're leaning on. You're going to sue me for that. You're going to sue me for believing people that tell the truth and not believing people that change the story every single time they feel like it's not going in their direction. And boy, do we have a timeline of that happening. Should you be inclined to file any further regarding further regarding the opacity of the legal proceedings that Jane instigated, please promptly disclose the alleged postings in a manner that complies with rule two. So we can ac ac asset access uh, the same and properly respond to the court in kind excuse me, assess the same. Whew, my tongue is twisted. You know what that feels like. So we get into the goods. And again, I appreciate people going to bat for me. Trust me when I say this. 
as someone who has never before this case met Woodnick and uh, before this case never met Clayton other than a virtual interview, these people aren't coming to my back because they want to risk their legal integrity. They're coming to my back because I'm on the right side of this story. Do you understand? This isn't some, oh, boys club, we got to go support Dave, the video journalist. No, they've watched her spew vitriol about me on her Medium article, rewriting her story, and they said enough is enough. So when she asks me the night before, she's suing me for harassment, a lawsuit I fully intended to defend, thanks to all of you, thanks to a $10,000 retainer, which you should never need. People told me, Dave, you'll never need $10,000 for an injunction against harassment lawsuit. You don't even need a lawyer for it. Well, you know what I did? I knew what I was up against, and I hired somebody I trusted who's a good person, who's been in the legal system for a very long time, who's worked in family court. Even though my IAH, my IAH wasn't family court, we needed to know how to operate the court system I believe she has abused. And in doing that, I, 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 I wasn't prepared to come to this legal fight without all of the defense possible. She knew she was going to drop her charges against me. I bought a refundable ticket. And then hours beforehand, her, attorney, her attorneys in Los Angeles who didn't even know she was pregnant, we had to let them know. She claims she's pregnant. What? This is a paternity? I thought he was just harassing her online. No, 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 no. Her... Lawsuit against me was rejected by First Amendment concerns in the sense that the restraining order that she tried to get on me was rejected. How are you going to get a restraining order on someone you've never met, you idiot? How stupid was that? Well, she just wanted to use it to threaten me, and she could, and she probably didn't have to spend a penny to file it. And it's not like her reputation is shot. So then after that, I said, okay, she has one stipulation. She goes, we want to make sure you, Dave, don't incite any violence against me. And people online said, Dave, how dare you? They threaten my intelligence. Are you dumb? Why are you going to sign this stipulation? You're playing right into her hand. What am I supposed to do, folks? Not sign the stipulation? A stipulation that says I'm not going to do stuff I haven't already done? I'm not giving her more ammo. So when I signed the stipulation and played the hand she wanted me to play, she then gets a death threat. Maybe it was from a crazy person. I don't know, but I can't assume that in this stage of the game. And I understand people can criticize me all they want. How dare you do that? I mean, you know, she was going to drop the case either way. So expedited motion to set virtual status conference. This is going to take a few minutes to go through. These are all of the violations she claims were made by Greg Woodnick and then some by Lexi Linval. So let's jump into it. Accusation of fabrication of fabricating a pregnancy and misconduct. And I'm going to just read these and provide little commentary because they're bananas. Quote, petitioner initiated the underlying action when she filed her petition, alleging that she was pregnant with respondent's twins after only oral sex. Respondent has consistently maintained that this alleged pregnancy was entirely fraudulent. The violation, she claims, this could be potentially violate Rule 4.1, truthfulness in statements to others, by making potentially unfounded allegations about the petitioner's honesty and intentions. Mr. Woodnick was not there the night that the respondent and I hooked up and cannot make it seem like a fact that we only had oral sex when that is not the truth. So even in this response, she doesn't say that they had sex. She just says he was not there and we didn't just have oral sex. Well, maybe they had oral sex and watched a Disney movie afterwards. I don't know. Little little Blowy and Peter Pan. I don't know what the hell they were doing. I don't know what gets off their rocks. You know what I mean? They're hanging out, rubbing and tugging, watching A Bug's Life. I don't know what they're doing. I don't really care. Other than I know they didn't have sex, according to everything Clayton has said, the one person that has provably not lied so far. Insinuation of dishonesty without proof. Quote, Petitioner's only evidence provided in support of her alleged pregnancy has consisted of faked sonograms and positive HCG tests. Potential violation. This could infringe on Rule 8.4C, misconduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, and misrepresentation, depending on the veracity and intent behind these claims. How does it... What? So at what point... She's not even arguing that, that that's all they have? Where's the fraud? If you're going to claim that there's fraud in this violation... Tell us why it's fraudulent. Share with us the ultrasound image that's not doctored. Misrepresentation of facts to the court. Quote, no medically verifiable proof of pregnancy that would satisfy the requirement of Rule 2 has been provided. Potential violation. 
candor toward the tribunal. If there is a suggestion that I, that I, that I am is lying without clear evidence. All right. Maybe the monster energy overtook her, uh, um, uh, uh, ability to, uh, edit this. If there is a suggestion that I am is lying without clear evidence. I don't even know what to say with that. Allegations of avoiding disclosure and manipulating legal processes. Quote, instead of, and by the way, these quotes are from Woodnick's side and then the violation is her response to them. I need another sip of it. Quote, instead of providing basic discovery, she has filed bar complaints, board complaints, and sued journalists. Petitioner is claiming she cannot disclose records to respondent but is publishing articles about the situation. Potential violation could be seen as a violation of Rule 3.3 Canter toward the tribunal if these statements are misleading or manipulate the legal process for an unfair advantage. What is she, what is she even talking about? Sued journalists. Now, I guess you could argue, did she sue me? Did she, she dropped her lawsuit. She filed a lawsuit against me. Claiming petitioner's actions, uh, you know, uh, it's what it should have said is um, she sued big boy journalists. She didn't just sue journalists. She sued big boy journalists. Claiming petitioner's actions are sanctionable without sufficient justification. Quote, petitioner's sanctionable at conduct and wholesale inability to support the fiction of her alleged pregnancy. I love the words being used. Potential violation. Uh, might violate Rule 3.1. If the claims of sanctionable conduct are not substantiated by evidence, personal attacks on petitioner's character. Quote, for all respondent knows, the imaginary twins are buried at a horse ranch. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. What? <laughs> Jesus. How did I miss this one? For all respondent knows, the imaginary twins are buried at a horse ranch. Oh, oh boy. I'm sorry. I've been rendered speechless. Violation. The statement could be considered as violating rule 8.4 as it seems no, uh, to serve no purpose other than to demean me in a personal and distressing manner. Insinuation of unlawful behavior without proof. Quote, instead of providing basic discovery, she has filed bar complaints, board complaints, and sued journalists. But they already shared this part. Violation. Conduct pre, uh, pre, prejudicial to the administration of justice, suggesting misuse of legal processes without evidence. I have not filed board complaints nor sued journalists. Objection, your honor! I mean, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Oh, it's raining outside. <whistles> As you just... Okay. Soiled. Just soiled this. Sue journalists. Guys. Tell that to the $10,000 check I cut my lawyer. Tell that to the GoFundMe we had to raise because she was denied a restraining order when she filed an injunction against harassment. Could you argue that an injunction against harassment is not suing a journalist? I mean, I maybe, but come on. What are we doing here, folks? Disparaging, I mean, she literally tormented me for months. I'm on my baby moon and I get a cease and desist from her, right? I'm in this beautiful bungalow south of India on an island in the middle of nowhere. I have one of those glass floors where you can see the turtles and I get a cease and desist from some podunk $9.99 an hour lawyer who's not even probably registered in Arizona or California. I didn't sue any journalists. You know what you did. Disparaging remarks about petitioner's credibility. Petitioner claiming that she had access to verifiable medical records to support her allegations of pregnancy, but then refusing to make them available. Violation, fairness to opposing party and counsel by suggesting I am not being forthcoming without substantial proof. When I submitted it with my filings prior to wouldn't it coming on, I have never refused to provide information. I just asked for a protective order because he has been releasing everything filed and every communication to the media, and I wanted to make sure he didn't do that with my medical records. Well, how has this aged? Because a month after this, they are now refusing to release medical records saying, oh, they don't have to provide disclosure. That's where they are right now, folks. And what records have she has she released? An HCG test. I bet you if I go drank a couple uh, gallons of, uh, you know, it, it, you don't understand the point. I, I want to take an HCG test. I bet I, I don't want to do this to my body because I don't want HCG in my body because I don't know what it does. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to uh, accidentally knock myself up by chugging, you know, HCG and Monster Energy. Have you ever watched one of those movies like a hot tub time machine? You never know what you put your finger in an outlet and you, and you drink, drink a Monster Energy. Next thing you know, you're having babies. I don't need that. I don't need to go to this horse ranch and, you know, I don't need the whole thing. But either way, 
it's ridiculous that she says, well, they don't even have proof that I'm refusing, and now they do. So that's null. Failure to maintain dignity and respect to the court. Quote, petitioner's perpetual disregard for court rules is exhausting. Potential violation. Impartiality and decorum of the tribunal through comments that may undermine respect for the court's authority. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got to stop responding. Inappropriate commentary on legal strategy. Petitioner now says she is no longer pregnant, but has failed to identify if this is a result of fetal death or the alleged babies have been put up for adoption. Potential violation. By using sensitive personal circumstances to question my integrity or legal strategy inappropriately. Everybody's questioning your integrity. Welcome to the club dismissive reference to legal concerns full quote the antics from the petitioner continue to proliferate and it is clear from the communication as appended that petitioners most recently retained counsel approximately the 12th in this series of cases is having challenges with client control that impact respondents ability to access requisite disclosure as shown in the do- as shown in the docket mr Corey keith is my second a- attorney not 12th <laughs> she goes he's my second attorney well i know she's good at reading they said petitioners most uh, uh, in approximately the twelfth in this series of cases. So sure, he might have been your second, and now you're on your um, third attorney in this case. But in these series of cases, series of cases involving the attorney used against me, uh, which by the way, she's used at least two attorneys. Uh, three really if you want to count her current one and then the ones she had from LA and then also the one she hired to send me a cease and desist so that's three attorneys right there and then she's got the three from here that's five because one was the same attorney and then we've got attorney shoes and Greg Gillespie's and then attorney shoes and Mike Maricini you know it goes on and on and on potential violation Uh, suggesting a lack of respect for my legal concerns and diminishing the seriousness of my claims without due consideration. Full quote. Petitioner's blatant refusal to provide any disclosure or engage in discovery must be addressed prior to the evidentiary hearing. During the nearly seven months since initiating this action, petitioner's only evidence provided in support of her alleged pregnancy has consisted of fake sonograms and positive ACG tests. Violation. Suggesting misconduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation through unproven allegations of falsifying medical evidence unproven allegations and now we know just a month later she admits to falsifying medical evidence oh but 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 i only changed the the subject line so that he couldn't track it okay okay So she's just telling on herself. Accusation of fabricating pregnancy and extortion. Full quote. This time petitioner chose a television personality on which to perpetuate this fraud and not only faked the pregnancy but attempted to extort him to date her in exchange for an abortion of fictional twins. Potential violation. Mr. Whitnick accuses me of fraud and extortion without substantiated evidence implying dishonesty and misrepresentation on my part. This obviously damages my reputation. What reputation, Jane? Are you going to argue what extortion means? If you date me with intention, I'll abort the babies. If you do one thing, I'll do the other. That's extortion. If you drop this case, I won't sue you for $1.4 million. Now, maybe the truth is, if we go on a few dates, maybe I'll get an abortion. You can't hold that to somebody. When you hold it to them, that's an extortion. That's a big boy extortion. That's a big boy extortion. $1.4 million dangling the lives of somebody's babies. I got a, ba- oh, I got a baby over there. Hold on. Here, I got these little plastic babies from my baby shower here. There. So you're just going to dangle the life of some baby? Oh, if you date me for a week, take me to Olive Garden once and I'll kill this baby. The hell out of here. Big boy fraud. That's big boy fraud. Misrepresentation of medical evidence. Full quote, petitioner has willfully and wantonly failed to provide any Rule 49 disclosure response to any uh, request for production and refused to attend a properly noticed Rule 57 deposition. It's true. She flaked on the deposition. Potential violation. Rule 3.4 suggesting that I deliberately obstructed the legal process and discovery despite my compliance with procedural rules and efforts to provide your requested information. Claim of fraudulent court. See, she would have been better off finding one of these and actually providing evidence to support it. I mean, the the guy did did uh did this Potter guy even read this? 
Or is he taking a dump going, all right, dismiss that. What is this? What do we do? He's in the stall, knocking on the stall next to him. Well, I'm going to forward you an email. Get And then you just hear a toilet flushing. Misleading accusation of pregnancy fabrication. Respondent maintains that this alleged pregnancy was a hoax con, much like the previously litigated matters involving petitioner and other men similarly situated. Potential violation. Suggesting without proof that I fabricated my pregnancy, indicating dishonesty, fraud, deceit, and misrepresentation. Your job is to provide proof that you ever were pregnant. So don't get so mad at the defense for not providing proof that you fabricated it. You work on you, Jane. You work on you providing the proof. I do have proof. I provided searchthesaurus.com incredible levels of proof. Unsubstantiated claim of extortion. This time petitioner chose a television and then, you know, we already got that. Her response, asserting without evidence that I attempted to extort someone under false pretenses. Um, well, they didn't, they didn't say, okay, I don't want to even argue that one. Sure. Accusation of deceptive court behavior. Petitioner then appeared in court wearing an ostensibly fake pregnant stomach, furthering her fraudulent narrative. Here's where it gets good. Because here now we, and by the way, buckle up. Buckle the flip up. Because we're going to do a two-hour live stream today. We're going to do two hours as we continue to discuss this and make our podcast and all that jazz. Potential violation for claiming without substantiation that I engaged in deceptive behavior in court, pre prejudicial to the administration of justice. I did not appear with a fake pregnancy stomach. Okay, good. So now we have her right here in February arguing that that stomach was real. So if she decides... And again, and this is where we can look at experts judging fundal height. She wasn't just pregnant with one, pregnant with two. She claims she was pregnant with two, and boy, was she pregnant. In that video, she was so pregnant. And now, since then, she claims she was actually having the miscarriage September or October, weeks or months before this happened. Come on. If she ever decides to change the date of her quote unquote miscarriage, and I know she doesn't even know when it happened because everyone argues it probably didn't happen, then uh, according to opinions people have based on her lack of providing any evidence whatsoever, I think it's fair to question whether her stomach was that big. Because people have photos of her in court at the latest thing and she's real thin. Congratulations, Jane. You work out. You've probably, you know, your heart rate's nice and high, you, you know, from all the stimulants and you do Barry's boot camp and you work out. Congratulations. Um, but you don't go from a stomach like that to nothing. You don't, <clears throat> it just doesn't happen unless you take the stomach off. Bad faith litigation. Petitioner's baseless accusations and myriad of filings have harmed him. Now she's, so he, her accusations have harmed him. How the hell is she going to say that that's a violation? Or, um, uh, regarding meritorious claims and contentions by suggesting my legal actions lack legitimacy without evidence. Okay. One of her legal actions in the past court case was claiming he was behind a conspiracy to grape. Grape without the G. You understand what I'm saying here? Uh, you don't think that's harmful to a man's dignity to be accused of one of the worst things you can accuse someone of? having never met him before in person. Accusations without proof. Petitioner's factual contentions, assertions of pregnancy not supported by any verifiable evidence from the onset of this action. Violation accusing me of lying without presenting clear evidence. Provide the clear evidence you're telling the truth. Claims of unreasonable filings. And you might say, oh, Dave, it's not up to her to provide evidence she's telling the truth. It's up to him to provide evidence she's lying. Well, if she can't refute any of his lies, isn't that evidence enough? Claims of unreasonable filings. Petitioners repeated filings, including a motion to dismiss once she alleges she was no longer pregnant, being unsupported by existing law. Violations on filing non meritorious claims and contentions by alleging my emotions are baseless when they are not. I wanted to dismiss the case after I had a miscarriage since there was no longer paternity to determine. What day did you miscarriage? Offensive and speculative remarks. Full quote. If impossible for moral sex, petitioner was actually pregnant, delivered twins, and or suffered a miscarriage post-24 weeks gestation, at any point during this proceeding, she would have verifiable medical evidence. To date, no fetal death certificates have been executed, no con con confirmable medical evidence has been presented, and petitioner has continued to claim protection while reaching out to the media directly. Uh, 
potential violations, suggesting conduct pre prejudicial to administration of justice through speculative and offensive remarks regarding the outcome of a pregnancy. This comment not only trivializes the serious matter of pregnancy and potential loss, but also ventures into making unfounded and specula speculative assertions about highly personal and sensitive circumstances without any substantiating evidence, which could be deeply distressing and seen as an attempt to demean or harass. And as stated before, Mr. Winnick was not there the night that the respondent and I hooked up and that and cannot make it seem like a fact that we only had oral sex when that is not the truth. I think it's fair eight, nine months into this thing for them to suggest she was never pregnant if at that point she has not provided any evidence she ever was. I think that's fair. I don't think that's harmful to her mental health that they have yet to see one ultrasound. For all respondent knows, imaginary twins are buried at a horse ranch. All right, we already covered this, but a different violation. Suggesting conduct prejudicial to administration of justice through the use of insensitive and speculative language about a highly personal matter. Full quote. Her entire petition was predicated on lies and delusions and mirrors prior litigation involving Miss Jane Doe and a growing list of other victims. This rule exhibits, uh, her violation says, the rule prohibits conduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation. Mr. Whitney's definitive statements that my entire petition is based on lies or delusions directly accuses me of fraud and deceitful behavior without prefacing these allegations as opinions or unproven claims. His failure to use qualifiers like allegedly suggest an unusual certainty in these serious accusations, which could be seen as a direct attack on my character integrity. The men that he refers to as my victims are men that I have orders of protection against. So then she does the order of protection thing. Very interesting. All right, we're on page 86. Do we need to jump ahead to page 93? Um... Uh, a lawyer must not... Uh, fair. Okay, so then she shares the different rules there. Um... Uh, derogatory speculation and accusation. Simply, uh, the full quote, simply said petitioner's pregnancy was faked. The bump displayed in Judge Gilkekis's courtroom was ostensibly purchased as evidence by petitioner, clearly adjusting what appears to be a fake belly and guzzling a monster energy drink. Curious for someone claiming to have a high-risk pregnancy. And so then she goes, the statements not only question the veracity of my medical condition in a derogatory manner, but also implies deceit in a way that could prejudice the court and public perception unjustly. Well, she's the one who drank the Monster Energy drink uh, on a public uh, streamed court case. The remarks about the pregnancy being faked and the condescending tone regarding the consumption of a Monster Energy drink could be seen as intended to embarrass or demean me, which is inappropriate. The condescending tone. He was mean when he, when he uh, talked about me drinking Monster. By the way, Monster Energy drink getting so much publicity. Unfairness to opposing party and counsel, which obligates lawyers to refrain from making unfounded allegations that do not have a factual basis. The assertion that the pregnancy was faked without providing concrete evidence directly undermines the principle of fairness in litigation. Mind you, there are sources that think she may have had that, pre that fake pregnancy belly from prior court cases that could have been a long time ago. So even if they found her Amazon wish list, it might not be on there. But boy... Wouldn't that be nice if in the dumpster of her house or whatever, they found this thing just laying out there? Check the landfill. Um, guys, I'm not telling anyone to go to her place because obviously it's not going to be in the dumpster, okay? I'm not telling anyone to go to her place. I'm not telling anyone to do that. But it would be nice if the court could order maybe the police to just check it out and say, all right, let's just go through your shelves because what if she had a belly? Not a real one, but what if she had a silicone belly? Wouldn't that be crazy? That, they would never do that. Um, da, da, da. so anyway, she goes, violation, violation, violation. Let's just go to, uh, we'll read the rest of these on the Patreon. I know there's some still good ones in here, but let's go to Lexi, Lexi Lindvall. Um, so then she continues to argue the fake pregnancy things and fight back on that. Um, uh, Here's a good one. Uh, full quote. Petitioner's ACG test proved nothing in her reliance on them when she could provide simple and basic evidence. Begs many questions about her credibility and motivations. Her response. An HCG test is what any doctor uses to test for pregnancy. Yeah, you flipping moron. And then you know what they do? An ultrasound. You know what they do? A Doppler. They listen for her heartbeat if it's that far along. They look for the sack. They look for any sign you're pregnant. They don't just go, oh, HCG test. Well, book the delivery appointment. We know Jane Doe's not an idiot. We know she's not an idiot. She takes us for an idiot, and that's the offensive part. Unfounded allegations of court misuse. She claims um, you know, that it wasn't all done in bad faith. Petitioner wanting to be pregnant and being pregnant are two different things. Um... 
Her violation says disrespecting my dignity and personal situation for pre for potentially prejudicial conduct. Uh, her entire petition was predicated on lies or delusions. And then she, the men that he refers to as my victims are men I have orders of protection against. Yeah, just because you have orders of protection don't mean shit with regard to them being victims of you. So then here we have an email from her to the Arizona State Bar. We'll end on this. Dear Arizona State Bar, I'm writing to you under circumstances of extreme urgency and distress. Oh, I'm sure. Related to my ongoing paternity case and the conduct of two attorneys, Mr. Greg Woodnick and Ms. Lexi Lindvall. Due to the immediate nature of the issues at hand, particularly an upcoming deposition on the 17th, I'm unable to follow the standard procedure for filing a formal claim and thus seek your immediate intervention via this communication. My paternity case was initially headed towards dismissal after my miscarriage with both parties self-represented. By the way, it w okay, first of all, she didn't claim she miscarried until January. All right, so she's already, she's already wrong here. She didn't claim she miscarried until January, but in January, she claims it happened back. Uh, she didn't actually share a date till later on. So now it was heading towards dismissal because there was no action happening. It was like an automatic thing. All right, we're going to dismiss this because no, no movement's happening. However, the trajectory of the case shifted drastically when Mr. Winnick entered the case as soon as it appeared on the dismissal calendar. His involvement seemingly motivated by a personal vendetta against me on a prior case has added a contentious and distressing dimension to the proceedings. And in the call that I am attaching, Ms. Linval explains to me about her first phone call with Mr. Rudnick that this case is personal for him and describes how he and his co-counsel, Isabel, were yelling at her on the phone. Take a breath. It, uh, is it illegal if the case is personal to Rudnick? That's the biggest thing going against her is that she made this personal by claiming he was part of a grape conspiracy against her. No, not grape, the fruit that you grow that turns into wine. Grape, the R word that we're just saying here on YouTube so we don't get in trouble, right? So it was also personal because she then changed her position and started making uh, blogs where she was clearly showing she's going to pretend to be the victim moving forward. So while it might seem personal to Greg, he also saw what she was doing to me, a big boy reporter, and realized she was going to do the same thing to Clayton, which is rewrite the story and probably make a TEDx talk about it and this and that. And the only thing people have done is hold her accountable to all of the places where people believe she lied. Context of innocence and ethical implications of Ms. Linval's actions. I provided incontrovertible evidence of my pregnancy to Ms. Linval, including access to my Banner Health por patient portal. Despite this, she pressured me to sign a statement falsely declaring that I was never pregnant with Mr. Eckert's child. This demand for perjury, which I repeatedly refused in our attached call conversation, represents a clear ethical violation. She also encouraged me to sign the same affidavit after that conversation in the attached email correspondence. Her insistence on this false declaration and her sub subsequent decision to withdraw under threat of a Rule 3.3 filing have left me in a vulnerable state without representation when there are many things that need to be responded to very soon. Additional ethical violations by Miss Lexi. Her failure to properly communicate the implications and alternatives to her withdrawal and the advice she provided might also constitute a violation of the duty to communicate effectively with a client. Declining or terminating representation. Her decision to withdraw from representation seems to conflict with the responsibilities outlined in this rule. By the way, Jane Doe signed off and gave consent to Lexi Linval's uh, terminate, uh, terminating this uh, representation here. And again, Lexi Linval wanted her to sign the paperwork saying she uh, faked the pregnancy because that's what Lexi Linval believed she did. And for that, I think Lexi Linval's pretty badass. Good for her for trying to do the right thing. Mr. Whitnick's unwillingness to allow extensions as a potential violation. Mr. Whitnick's refusal to grant an extension for the deposition, especially given the pending motion to dismiss and motion to quash the deposition, may constitute a violation. And now what we now know is that the judge struck down the motion to quash and the uh, motion to dismiss. Um, so they didn't move forward with that. They, initially, they, they eventually got the deposition. We obviously covered all that. Ethical violations by Mr. Greg Whitnick. Uh, concerns under Rule 3.4D, fairness to opposing party and counsel. His refusal to grant, oh, we got that. Uh, great, Mr. Woodnick's conduct, particularly his refusal to provide extension in his aggressive communication, might be construed as conduct pre pre prejudicial to the administration of justice. The aggressive and personal nature of Mr. Woodnick's communication appears to be aimed more at harassing and intimidating me than at any legitimate legal strategy. Uh, maybe the truth is intimidating to her. I don't know. 
Uh, this prospect of facing a four-hour deposition without legal representation is daunting. Given the emotionally charged nature of this case, including the context of my miscarriage, I am deeply concerned that this deposition is being used as a tool for further intimidation and harassment. She sees everything as a tool for harassment. No, it's a tool to get the truth. To demonstrate my innocence and refute claims that I have falsified a pregnancy, I'm providing the login information on my Banner Health patient portal. Given the immediate nature of this situation, I'm seeking advice on immediate steps I can take. I appreciate your prompt attention and await your guidance on navigating these challenging circumstances. There it is, folks. After all of that, after all of the evidence she thought she provided, the Arizona bar said, uh, we're going to reject all of this and watch it play out in court. We'll come back later. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. And it goes on and on. Now, I don't have time to cover this. I just don't have time. I'm going to cover this on today's Patreon. We're going to be going live at 11 a.m. Central Time. So chances are, by the time you got to this, we will be live. You can join us, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. The money you donate helps fund our legal bills. I mean, I don't know I don't know what else to say. The money you donate helps us in all of the threats of defamation. I've re-retained my own lawyer to handle all of this so that I can continue providing my bandwidth towards the truth. That's what you do. As a big boy journalist, we'll be back with more content right after this.